Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. Today we're going to be looking at the Geolocation plugin. This is a plugin that will allow us to get the location from the GPS of our device. First we'll start by installing the actual package from our PubSpec YAML. The package is called Geolocation and the current version as of this recording is 0.2.1. Now because this package relies so heavily on what are called channel messages, which come from their respective platforms, Android and iOS, we need to manipulate our Android and iOS applications so that we can get the proper properties and so that this will work properly inside of our Flutter application. For Android, we want to come into App, Source, Main, and then open up the Android manifest.xml file. And here we're going to add a new permissions field. So use this permissions, Android name, android.permissions.access find location. This will allow Android to ask the user if we can have access to the GPS of their device. For iOS to work properly, we need to come into the iOS folder, into the runner folder, and open up the info.plest file. In here we need to add these keys. The strings that accompany these keys are not necessary. However, typically when you add permissions in iOS, you want to add some kind of justification for why your application needs these permissions. With that all set up, we can now come back into our Flutter layer and start to work with this plugin. The library that we want to import will be called geolocation backslash geolocation.dart. I've got some boilerplate already built inside of this Flutter application. Now because channel messages, these are messages that come from the platform code, are asynchronous, we need to import Dart async. Inside of our stateful widget, we can make a call to the geolocation result, is location operational, to check to see if this plugin is working properly. So we can say, okay, final geolocation result, result await geolocation dot is location operational. And then if we get a result that is successful, then we can print out success. Otherwise we'll print out failed. And then we can call this function inside of our init state function. Now, if you build up this application and you get back failure, then you may not have the GPS on your emulator set up properly, or the application may not have asked you for the permission. If this is the case, you can manually add the permission by going to the settings of your Android emulator. You can see here that I indeed got back success, so this is working properly. Now let's actually build out this application. So all I really want to do with this application is to be able to pull our GPS and actually pull down the longitude and latitude that we're currently at. We'll create three global variables. The first will be a list of location result, call this locations, and this will be a list of our location data. Then we'll have a stream subscription with location result inside of it. And this is what we'll use to stream from the GPS to our view. And then we'll have a Boolean called track location and this boolean will be true when the GPS is actually feeding data into our view and false when the GPS is not feeding data into our view. Just to be safe, I'm going to initialize these two values inside of the init state function. Now let's create a get location function. First we want to check to see if track location is true, and if it is true, then we'll call set state immediately and we'll set it to false. And we'll also take our stream subscription cancel it, and then set it equal to null. This will be the part of the function that we'll use to turn off our GPS stream. If track location is false, however, we want to call set state and set it equal to true. And then to actually get our location data and feed it into our stream subscription, we want to call geolocation.locationUpdates. We can pass in a few properties. So I want to pass in the accuracy, so we want the best accuracy possible. Then we can set up a displacement filter. This property allows us to set up a variance between when the location updates will come through. So if the location doesn't change, then it won't try to pull for a new location if you have the displacement filter at something that's greater than zero. So because I have it as 0.0, .0 
This means that it will constantly feed us data regardless of whether or not we've actually moved our GPS coordinates. The final property that we can set up is whether or not this is going to happen in the background of our application. And in our case, I'm going to say false. Now we need to attach a listener to this stream subscription. So after we call the location updates, we just call listen and we pass in a callback function. This callback function will take the result that we get and then of course pass it back to us. So we have to decide how we want to handle that. In our listener, I'm going to create a final variable called result, and then we're going to call set state and take our location and add it to our locations list. For the final line in our function, we want to do something when the stream subscription is finished. So we call stream subscription dot on done, and then we pass in a callback function, which I'm going to have call set state. And in this set state call, I'm going to have it set our track location boolean to false. All right, so now let's build out our UI a bit. I'm going to add a center to the body and then I'll put our container inside of that center. We'll then create a list view and we'll use this list view basically to show all of the longitudes and latitudes that we have from our GPS. And we can use the map function to easily deal with this. So what we'll do is we'll take our locations list, we'll call map on it, and then for each location, we'll create a new list tile. And then inside of each of our list tiles, we can create a text field and we can say, you are here. And then on our lock variable, we can call lock.location and then call dot longitude to get the longitude and dot latitude to get the latitude. The other variable that we have access to is our altitude, which we can then add to the subtitle of our list tile. So now we've got a way to actually see our location. We need a way to basically execute the function, which will then execute the logic and fill up our list. We can do this by adding actions to our app bar. So inside of the actions, we have a list of widgets. We'll create a flat button and the child of this flat button will say get location. And then we can have the on pressed property fire off our get locations function to get the locations and populate our list. All right, so now let's take a look at our application. Here it is. So we've got the title and then we've got our flat button. When we click our flat button, you can see we now have these GPS coordinates being fed to us. It's saying that we're currently at negative 117.11 and 32, and then it's giving us the altitude. Now I can come in here and I can change the GPS. So let's open up the map. And currently I have it set to San Diego, but I can set it literally to anywhere in the world. So let's put it somewhere in China and see if it updates. And you can see here it does in fact update to our new GPS coordinates. And even if we go and we set it into the C, it does in fact update. If we keep moving it around, we should get various different GPS coordinates every single time it pings to the platform and asks for the current location. If we click the get location button again, it will then disable our stream, which will stop the list view from being populated. So you can see here that the list view is not growing anymore. It actually might be beneficial for us to come into our get locations function and set locations equal to an empty list after we cancel our stream subscription and turn it into null. This way we clear the view when we click the get location button again. So now when I click get location, it starts again from the top and it starts repopulating everything. So unfortunately, there's no real way for us to build a Google map currently inside of Flutter. At least there's no decent library as of yet. I know that the Flutter team is working on one, but I know that it's also not a priority currently. That being said, we can take advantage of this geolocation library and the static maps API to basically cheat out a Google map. So to actually accomplish this, we'll take our location result and rather than make it into a list of location results, we'll just make it into a single location result. Inside of init state, rather than initializing it with an empty list, we can initialize it with null. 
And then down inside of the get locations function, we can have it become null after we close off our button. Also, at the very bottom of our function, when we were adding the location to our locations list, instead we can just take location and set it equal to our locations variable. Now what we can do is we can take the Google Maps API, which is actually just a image, put it into an image.network widget, and then feed our latitude and longitude into it. And of course you need to add an API key for this to work properly. We'll also make sure to have a null check. So we'll take our locations, and if it's equal to null, then we just put in an empty string. Otherwise, we populate our map. In here, where it says center, this is the latitude, and this is the longitude. So we can come in here and use string interpolation to take our locations variable, get the latitude and get the longitude, and then just put it directly into this URL. I've also put my API key in there, but of course I'm not going to show it to you guys, sorry. If you do want an API key, just sign up for the Google Maps API and then enable it in the Google APIs console. Now let's call get location. You can see here we have our map. And if we open up our GPS map, you can see that the map is actually the same. So now we can go and we can click in different areas and over time our map will change. So it won't change very fluidly, but it will still update. So if I choose say LA, now we're looking at LA, and I can zoom in to the city and I can do various things like that. If you want to add more functionality to the map that you're looking at, for instance, make it so that you can pan around and do things like that, then you would just make it so that when a gesture like panning happens, you have your geolocator call to the platform to get the GPS location. In this way, you can actually make it feel fairly native. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.